Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for everyone that's joining us. This is week one in a series of webinars that we will be doing for, for everyone on CMDB, and particularly how to manage a CMDB in modern IT environments. Uh, I am not Indivir. Uh, I am Adam Lawson. I am a product developer for BMC in the Solution Engineering Architects team. And I will introduce Indivir here in just a minute, who will be the one leading in the demonstration for today. But um, we're starting this series because of engagements and just the evolution of the IT environment in the past several years. Of course, everyone's familiar with the work at home craze from just a few years ago. And, and then of course, uh, there's a big cloud movement. And then, of, you know, before that, you, know, you had virtual machines being a big thing and, and uh, high scalability. And now you're starting to see containers and Kubernetes and, and cloud environments. And, and even, you know, in the recent, you know, year or so, you're seeing evolutions in artificial intelligence and AI ops. And we, we see this with all kinds of market areas. Uh, it's clear that the IT environment is changing. So we wanted to actually bring this to a wide audience. Uh, of people, and over the course of the next several weeks, we'll be talking about uh, all kinds of different parts of the, the CMDB evolution that's currently going on, and how uh, Helix and BMC can help you in your transformation in your in your own organization. First thing, I want to go ahead and give a legal notice to everyone that this is an interactive session. You are being consent to having this recorded if you decide to share anything. Uh, so be please be mindful of that. I'm going to start by actually going with an overview of what CMDB is and how it fits into this whole picture. Of course, in the Helix ITSM system, everything starts with your database and AR system. Uh, if you don't have that right, everything else doesn't matter. So you have to start there. And if you're in a BMC SaaS environment, BMC takes care of that for you. And, uh, if you're in an on-prem environment, it's usually pretty easy to set up. You, you get your SQL database or a Postgres database or an Oracle database and install AR system on it. But then on top of that, CMDB is there. And, and CMDB effectively you know, is a configuration management database, is a place where you house configuration items and keep track of them and keep them updated so that way other applications can utilize them. Now, a CI is distinct from an asset. We're not really going to get into that here, but the, the thing to keep in mind is a CI is anything in your business that can change and gives you value. If it meets those two criteria, it, it effectively is a CI, and that could be anything from a, a document, a process that you have, all the way up to physical hardware sitting in your data center. Um, but CMDB is much more than that. It's, you know, we have all these engines that do a lot of normalization of data, movement of data, and, and other kinds of data grooming activities, but it also has service models. That's a really key thing, and we'll get to that here in just a minute uh, in modern workloads. But the, the key thing is, well, how do I get my CIs into my environment? Well, the first and most obvious option is manual entry. Anyone can type it in and enter that. And well, how do you do that, Adam? Well, it's real simple, asset management. And that's where ITSM comes into play. And that kind of sits on top of CMDB. Asset management and CIs have a tight uh, relationship with each other. Not necessarily one-to-one, -one, but for this discussion, let's just assume it's a one-to-one -one relationship. But you also have things like the product catalog, which, you know, drifts over in, into ITSM and CMDB. So it, it's important to kind of understand that, but really how does this play with my whole system? Well, it's real simple. Your service desk, your, your help desk tickets, your problem tickets, things like that, they can all be related to an asset. And it's really hard in modern IT environments to uh, have any kind of a service desk without those assets being accounted for, documented, and at least known about beforehand. So that's a very key component here is this relationship. 
but it extends just beyond service tickets too. You have change management, release management, and service request management, which probably are our four biggest applications in the ITSM suite, but you still have other things like contracts and knowledge management and other things like that that, that play a role in here as well. And while manually entering this data is really you know simple, it's anything but easy, right? Modern data centers now house thousands of physical servers that host dozens, if not multiple dozens, of uh, virtual machines, which host hundreds, sometimes, uh, pieces of software on each box. So manual entry, while it is simple, it is anything but easy. And this is really where your IT environment has to have some kind of an automated system like discovery or some other data source that that can pull data into the CMDB. And really with modern IT environments, it would be impossible to keep up with your CIs without some kind of automated tool to help leverage that. And ultimately, if you're not leveraging that, you're going to fall behind in this space. And that's an unfortunate truth of where we're at that if you're not automating this capability and you're not leveraging discovery, if you're not leveraging uh, client management, if you're not leveraging some data source that can pump data into your system, whether it comes from BMC or not, you're not going to be able to keep up and you will fall behind. But once you get all of this right and the CIs are there and you do have competent change processes and release processes and all that, this is really where AIOps comes into play. And AIOps is a, is a generalized term, uh, at least in this discussion, and all of these things key off of whatever's in ITSM. You say, well, well what, what kind of things include AIOps? Well, it's really simple. You know, you have reporting platforms, notification solutions for whenever outages go down, pager systems like that. You have event correlation, uh, client management tools, all kinds of things go into your AI ops solution. And Helix CMDB is at the middle of all of that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over here to Smart IT, and I'm going to just demonstrate how to create a asset. Uh, of course, this is the most obvious way. Uh, and we talked about asset management briefly. So I'm going to go ahead and create this asset. Uh, I'm going to create a business service and I'm going to name it de demo email service. I'm going to go ahead and give it a quick product category of service, infrastructure, email, give it a location. Save this, and of course it, it's been saved, and it'll go through the reconciliation process, which will complete relatively quickly. I'm going to go to the Asset Console, and sure enough, here's our new service that we just created. Now, I could uh, go ahead and create assets and relate existing assets. Uh, I could go ahead and you know, further enhance this data, but uh, there's no sense to do that here. Um, and this is where I'm going to go ahead and introduce Endervir, who's going to talk with us about Discovery and some of the other things that Discovery offers and some of the new features with blueprints and things like that. Endervir? Thank you, Adam. Yeah, hi, everyone. My name is Endervir, and I work with BMC Solution Engineering Architect Leaders Team. I'd be talking about data discovery and dynamic service models using blueprints today. So as, as Adam emphasized, Richness and accuracy of data plays an important role in IT management processes. And discovery is one of the important components which we use to achieve that. Business service models are the foundation of successful management of your IT environment. Uh, Helix Dynamic Service Models uses discovery data, data ingestion, and data imports, along with manual data entry and defined service blueprints. It helps you to map business services and their infrastructure populating a dynamic graph model in CMDB. I'll be walking you through an application that we have modeled and we have been monitoring it through various monitoring tools and discovery. And we are bringing in all that topology data 
to discovery, which is to be used for CMGB and other various use cases. So we have our retail outlet, uh, which is hosted on on-prem. A few of the services, few of the services are there on AWS, Azure, and uh, DB as at is at mainframe. We are bringing in all this data topology using discovery and various monitoring tools. As you can see here, we are getting the data from App Dynamics for that particular application. I also want to talk, walk you through the various things that we have discovered through the discovery runs. As you can see, we have all our hosts discovered through discovery. We are also getting the vCenter discovered here through discovery. We also bring in the network devices, network side of the story for this in infrastructure environment. Did storage systems where the particular vCenter VMs hosts are hosted, that also is captured. We also bring in the mainframe side of the story where we have our D transactions there. And as I showed that we have our components hosted on AWS and Azure. This entire infrastructure is story is captured and brought into discovery. The data is there for use in discovery and that is pushed to CMDB for further use within incident asset change management applications. You're yeah, moving to discovery. So let's look at a software cluster we have for this environment. So in discovery, you can see we are checking that particular software cluster. Part of the information for the software components is coming from App Dynamics and other information like mainframe, Azure Cloud, and AWS Cloud. We are capturing all that using discovery. This unique capability of Helix Discovery allows us to model modern dynamic architectures, including app to network and mainframe to storage use cases. Let us look at how we build these dynamic models. So earlier this year, BMC introduced Blueprint Service Modeling in Discovery. So we used to have CAM, Collaborative Application Modeling, which required developing rule-based code to build services. We also had SAM, Start Anywhere Application Modeling, which required manually adding and removing components from your models. By comparison, Blueprint Application Modeling uses advanced pattern matching algorithms to quickly identify and build business services for pre-built -pre patterns. As you can see here, we have a Manage Blueprint Definitions option. And once we come in, we can see out of the box blueprints provided by Discovery, which can be used to model your services. It could be cloud-related models. It could be very generic models for Kubernetes, network, storage. It could also be vendor-specific models like App Dynamics and Dynatrace. I'd be showing you one of the models where we are using App Dynamics and storage and cloud. So I'll explain out this model to you. So if you see this side of the information, the software clusters, storage, software instances, software components, all this information has been augmented by application monitoring tools. All this is being reconciled at the host level in discovery. And we have network information, the virtual and uh, our host information, on-prem host and all, the storage and the cloud information also being coming in from discovery. So this cloud pattern that you see, it's a very smaller pattern which can be used for any cloud service, be it AWS, Azure, GCP. So it applies to all the cloud vendors and it's generic in nature. To create and manage a business service, Helix Discovery will identify and match relationships that follow the model of the blueprint. All this is done dynamically as scans and ingested data is brought into Helix Discovery. The models and the updated CIs and relationships are pushed to CMDB. Let me walk you through how to create a business service. So here I'll show you how we can model dynamic service models using blueprints. Let's go to Blueprint Service Editor. Click on New Business Service and click on Add Dynamic Content. So we would be using an out of the box business blueprint model to model our service. I'm using this blueprint for App Dynamics Application Cloud mainframe storage model. We can see that the, there's a list of software clusters 
populated at the bottom. These are the software clusters that have been discovered using App Dynamics. We are interested in Retail Outlet. So we'll select that and we'll see the preview content. Here you can see we have all our data that has been captured by Discovery and their relationships which are being used dynamically to model this business service. This pattern includes storage, cloud services, mainframe, network, and also our on-prem hosts. You can quickly save and create a new business service out of this. I'll walk you through, through a business service that we have already created. Let's go to the list. I'll walk you through, through a business service that we have already created using the data that we have brought in. So here you see we have a retail outlet service. This business service shows you all the dynamic data that we have captured through APM tools and discovery. So this is your Azure side of story. This is your AWS side of story. This is mainframes and all other software components and related hosts. The same business service model is available in CMDB. If you see, you do have all your storage, mainframe, the on-prem hosts, all the software clusters, AWS, and the software components, all of the information pushed from discovery into CMDB. This model can now be used in CMDB for your ITSM use cases. In about the same time, Adam got to add the service and create the model. You can see Blueprint service model has created a better and a dynamic version of the same model in Discovery and also pushed it to CMDB. Let me take you to Asset Console. So in the Asset Console, we can see the same service is available. We have the related items, assets, and if we drill down, we can also go to the third level of assets there with their relationships. All this is possible here because we have those relationships in discovery, discovered, and pushed to CMDB. So this shows the power of modern CMDB systems that we envision for our future. 